Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 208, the NyQuil edition. I have George here who has a horrible head cold. We're actually taping between sneezes, which is kind of remarkable. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and today is December 8th, 2015. Three, two, one. All right, George and I are back from a little break. We took a Thanksgiving break, and uh, George has a head cold. So this is going to be an abbreviated, quick show. Um, sadly, we've had to do a couple retakes. Um, this is probably take four or five because of some clinic incidents that uh, maybe end up in the, uh, the outtakes at the end. But George, your cold even affected you on Sunday. Oh, during the... Uh the third and final service of Sunday, I went into a coughing and sneezing fit while celebrating Holy Communion. Fortunately, I had not consecrated the elements yet, so we were able to uh, swap everything off, bring in new hosts, new wine, new vessels, and uh, uh, when you have an older congregation and you don't want to kill everybody off, sanitation is important. It, it is. At our church, we have the uh, uh, the, the proper vessels, but the, the largest thing on the altar is the hand sanitizer um, with which the, the priests and deacons are frequently... So, on to bigger things. Turkey dinner. Um, turkey Thanksgiving is my favorite meal of the year. Um, I get to sit down and have my two favorite dishes, turkey and potatoes, and celebrate with all my friends and family. Uh, George, how was yours? lovely time my mother made uh, a meal for 30 people for the six of us who were there it was a wonderful time we had a ham we had a turkey we had a tofu turkey we had a salmon mousse and about six or seven vegetables mm. they, yeah. needless to say they have leftovers for the month of december all set up well george and i are both much better well-rounded individuals after thanksgiving um and so we've taken a little break we're coming back and we're going to talk about just war theory don't get away from your keyboard. Don't send me another email saying that's not Anglican and you guys need to stay away from politics. Just stick with Anglican news, which is uh, basically uh, GAFCON, ACNA, or Church of England. You guys aren't allowed to talk about anything else, anything political. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. While yes and no, Anglican unscripted allows me to talk about anything I want to. And so we're going to invoke the unscripted part of our show and talk about politics. Um, because George and I know a lot about politics. No, basically anytime we turn this camera on, we're both in way over our heads. And this is no different. We're in over our heads because we've, we've encountered something new. Um, not new, new, but for the last 50 years, um, Islamic radicals have been at war with the West. Um, what's new is it's not a nation. It's not something with borders. It's not something you can just say, we're going to send all our troops to uh, XYZ country and that will end it. Um, it's new because they don't wear uniforms. They're not soldiers that are, uh, in the standard sense. Um, it's not like World War One or II. Um, and it's new because it's gone on so long. There, there's something, uh, an element of this that uh, is truly evil. Thus, we have to involve what's Anglican about this. Well, the Archbishop of Canterbury, ha, Anglican, you can't get any more Anglican than the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, got before the uh, House of Lords last week and spoke about just war theory. I am not the expert in just war theory. I'm going to hand it off to George. Well, let's give a little bit of con context. Anglican Episcopal bishops love to talk. They love to give their advice. Catherine Jefferts Shore was always giving advice. No one would listen to it. But bishops for the last 100, 200 years have been more than willing to talk about things. Mm -hmm. um, we had the Episcopal Church in favor of Vietnam that opposed to Vietnam and so on and so on, back and forth. Do you remember Ed Browning supported right, yeah. Ed Browning supported Bill Clinton's campaign in Serbia, the air war against the Serbians. That was a moral thing to do. And when the, we had the uh, 
the run-up to the invasion to uh, topple Saddam Hussein. We had debates in the House of Parliament, and Tom Wright, M.T. Wright, said, you know, this is a bad thing to do. It doesn't meet the criteria for just war. And last week, we had the uh, House of Lords discuss the uh, potential of Britain joining the air campaign against ISIS, and the Archbishop of Canterbury did a wonderful job in saying, not only is this a strategic issue, a political issue, this is a moral issue. And he laid out, better than Ed Browning ever did, surprise, 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 uh, that the reason why we can use force is that force in this circumstances is justified by church teaching. And this is the just war theory he was discussing. Well, didn't Thomas Aquinas have six prongs? You know, but basically, so you have to, if, if you're going to use just war theory, these six things need to be met. What are those? Well, the first thing is, is this the last resort? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what does that mean? Is that like a stop on I-95, you know, south of the border? What is the last resort? The last resort is, have you tried everything else? Mm -hmm. Have you attempted to negotiate? Have you attempted to find a way that we can talk this issue through? Or is your first response to a problem to beat the other guy over the head with a hammer? Mm -hmm. Justin Welby said, look, we've tried negotiations, we've tried talking, nothing is working. This basically is the last resort. And the, the next thing he said is that, and it's the government acting. We're not uh, mob, it's not the mob rule here. It's not us as vigilantes trying to kill Muslims or anything like that. Government has a proper role in protecting its citizens. And our citizens, the French citizens, American citizens, People, Westerners are under threat from ISIS, and the government is acting in a legitimate capacity. And the third point is, it's in a just cause. ISIS is evil. Theology that is being that was spawned in Saudi Arabia, that is being de uh, disseminated across the Middle East by radical Islam, is evil. Now, that's a great thing for Justin Welby to say, because our own president will not use words like evil in, dis in dis d describing this fight, Justin Welby did. Mm -hmm. Those were the first three tests, and basically everybody agreed with him. The th second three tests is where he ran into opposition, including from another bishop, Richard Harris, the former Bishop of Oxford. And that first is, is this going to work? Yeah. Is there a probability of success? Richard Harris says, look, you know, you could say all these things about Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. But we went in, and now the situation is worse today than it was before if we had done nothing. Well, our sending in bombers to Libya, to Syria create another failed state like Libya. Justin Welby said, no, there is probability of success. Richard Harry said, yes, it's going to fail. And are we, are, is, are we doing this for the right reasons? Are we looking to colonize? No, we're looking to restore peace to the region. I think Welby and Harry's both agreed on that. And then finally, is this a proportional response? Are we sending in nuclear weapons to flatten Syria? No, we're sending in conventional weapons to destroy military arms depot. But where the left and the right in the Church of England divided in the House of Lords, is this going to win? If it's not going to succeed, then it's not a moral undertaking. If it is, then it is a moral undertaking, a proper function of government. <sighs> Well, you completely blew my mind because I thought this was just going to be a topic about gun control. Uh, I saw the, all the reports this week from uh, uh, what happened over in California, and I watched my president go on live TV before the football game. Whew, missed the football game. And uh, tell me that uh, the solution here is to make it harder for bad guys to get guns. And well, yeah, Barack Obama is not the only one saying no, that. Not. We we had here, all, here we get to go and talk about Anglicans again. <laughs> Philip Huggins, assistant bishop of Melbourne and the president of the Anglican Pacifist Fellowship. Uh, I wonder has, what he said. <laughs> well, he said Australia should introduce a mandatory gun buyback program. His argument is that if you take all the guns off the street, the terrorists won't be able to get guns to kill people. Mm -hmm. In other words, guns are a necessary ingredient to terrorism. Fewer guns, fewer terrorist incidents. That's Bishop Huggins of Australia. Uh, Michael Curry and John Bruno visited the scene of the San Bernardino shootings and basically endorsed the position taken by Barack Obama that what we need is stricter gun control laws. Um, that 
it's not unusual for Episcopal bishops to say and do dumb things. Um, and this is one of them. Uh, well, I, uh, I mean, it's the very it's, idea that that if you if you designate the state of California a safe gun free space, yeah, that's going to stop everybody from doing anything bad ever again. Oh, I got to say the terror. I, it may be okay. Barack Obama has told us that uh, it's because terrorists don't have. Uh, jobs and it's an economic factor. Uh, we've heard from some uh, uh, archbishops in in the Anglican Church that it may be an education factor, and I can see the point there. Maybe they can't read the gun free zone sign, but that's on the front door uh, of all these places well, they go. And one of out. our one of our friends of this program and one of our viewers, Munir Nice of Egypt, he put out a statement saying education is the key to winning over radical Islam. Mm -hmm. And some people, when we wrote up this story for Anglican Inc., just made fun of Archbishop Muneer, and they pointed out that uh, Osama bin Laden has an MBA, mm -hmm. and all of these 9-11 bombers were Western-educated, trained engineers. They weren't lacking in education. What Munir Nice is talking about is moral education, mm -hmm. that we need to, we and moderate Islam, need to seize the moral and intellectual high ground from radical Islam. Because right now, our president won't even call it evil, and how how can how can we even begin this fight if we're not willing to confront evil and call it evil? That's where Munir Nisa, I believe, was coming from. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. It, education, economics, all play a part. Um, right now, radical Islam is the winning game in town, and mm -hmm. uh, that's part of their success. Um, another is that you know, join or die. Um, that's always a good one. Um, it's a difficult enemy to fight because there is no border, they don't wear military uniforms, um, and they spread not just through face-to-face -face contact, but over the internet. Uh, they have a, an ability to, to evangelize by showing videos on YouTube, by uh, setting up websites where people can f uh, read their propaganda, and people enjoy uh, something to be passionate about. And whether or not they understand anything about Muhammad, there's something that is attracted and attractive by passionate people. This is not well, look, like any uh, uh, enemy we've ever seen. Well, look at the San Bernardino shooter, for example, Farouk Said. He, uh, he has an older brother, two years older, and after the 9-11 bombings, his older brother joined the Navy, served the United States in the Middle East mm -hmm. against the fight against radical Islam, and is a westernized, if you will, secularized Muslim. He's perfectly at home in our society and defends and stands for what we support the freedoms. Excuse me. <coughs> you're, you're allowed like five of those, George, with your cold. I can't believe you waited uh, all 12 <laughs> minutes for your first cough. Whereas the younger brother got involved in the world of uh, extremist mosques, radical imams, and basically the two went different directions, so that one wound up serving his country and the other wound up killing 14 other citizens of his country. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want to say Donald Trump is right, because if you kick out all Muslims or don't let any more in, you're kicking out the good as well as the bad. But certainly we can do something about uh, expelling some of these radical mosque leaders, uh, doing something to uh, cut down on the purveyors of hate, um, I don't. Well, yeah, in, I, I, I don't. In 1941, you wouldn't allow uh, American Nazis to come over from Germany, would you? No. Well, I mean, that's an interesting argument. Now we're getting into uh, um, uh, what to do about our borders. Uh, you know, it's interesting because just last year, uh, or, yeah, last year was the Ebola scare, and if you lived in West Africa, you could not get into America or Europe. They shut down all the uh, immigration and travel from those countries because of the danger it posed to the citizens of uh, Europe and America. So yes, there's pre uh, not prejudice. There's precedent for uh, doing stuff like that. You know, we look at so we, we were so bad at how we treated the Japanese with encampments and stuff like that. Yeah, we've not always done it right, but there is precedent. Yeah. Here's here's uh, here's a little Anglican Episcopal hook for uh, mm. for for inside baseball folks. Okay, you know 
uh, if you look at Facebook, a lot of Episcopalians and Anglicans like to be self-righteous about Donald Trump. I mean, they, oh, he's a terrible man, oh, this and that and the other thing. <coughs> well, then they say, oh, well, he is a Presbyterian after all. His third marriage took place at the Episcopal Church of Bethesda-by-the-Sea in Palm Beach. No way. Yes, way. I, and, and do you know what happened at this wedding? It was a star-studded uh, spectacular, and, hmm. and one of the guests was Muhammad Ali. Hmm? And a Muslim? Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali forgot he was a Muslim and went forward to receive Holy Communion. That is and inside baseball. <laughs> so we cannot hold our nose about Donald Trump because we marry him, folks. I'm yeah, sorry. That's right, yeah. What an open table they have at that church. <clears throat> oh, well. So, you know, we George and I don't have the answers. We just have to fill up 17 minutes talking about Anglican political issues. However, today's December 8th. Muhammad Ali and Donald Trump. Oh, we, and yeah, we, we really encapsulate the show. But today's December 8th. Yesterday was the uh, 74th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And I want to use this as an example of how to fight a war or respond to a threat to your country. Um, America was a nice, humble country. We just came out of the Depression. Um, there was a war going on in Europe. We didn't want anything to do with it. There's no way we're going to get involved in another land, land war anywhere. Um, our... <coughs> Troops were here. Our ships were all hunkered down in, in Pearl Harbor uh, because we weren't going anywhere. And nobody could be convinced that we should go to war um, w with Europe, Germany. Uh, I know that uh, many times calls were coming over from Britain saying, please join us, please help us. They're going to take us over anytime now. And we're like, eh, yeah, if that happens, call us. You know, we just weren't interested. And then the Japanese decided to uh, annihilate uh, our ships in Pearl Harbor. And America became a call to action. Within f uh, a half dozen years... <coughs> Are you going to make it, George? Keep going. Keep, keep going. going. You're on a roll. We're not starting. You're on a roll. Okay. Within a half dozen years, this country built enough ships, funded enough troops had enough soldiers to defeat um, enemies, <laughs> go for it, <laughs> on two fronts. We wiped out Japan, we wiped out Germany, two enemies um, in no time. We can do it, but it takes troops on the ground. It takes boots on the ground. It takes a whole country. Um, if you just listen to the media and the social media, this war will never be fought and what you see happening in Southern California and uh, here in Boston at the Boston Marathon, that's just going to be the new normal. And if you want the new normal, uh, it's here to stay. If you want to fight it, you have to do it with overwhelming mass force. And that's just the reality. George, um, we're going to sign off. We're up to 17 minutes. You had at least a dozen coughs. Um, people, please pray for George this week um, as uh, uh, he needs to get over this cold. And please give to Anglican TV because we're still raising tickets to fly to tickets, not raising tickets. We're raising money to buy tickets to fly to uh, Canterbury, where we will be covering the primates uh, meeting. We're not there yet. We need your help. Uh, if you're rich, you're more than welcome to send check or cash. Uh, if you're not rich, uh, talk to rich people so they'll give us um, cash. George, get better. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 208 of Anglican Unscripted. You say that so smoothly. I don't have that smooth tone. <coughs> Lucky strikes. <laughs> Lucky strikes. <laughs>
the greatest Episcopalian of the modern era. Greatest Episcopalian of the modern era uh, um, was Charlton Heston. It was Charlton Heston. It was yeah. Charlton Heston? I yeah. would say so. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, <clears throat> you know, after that, you know, it, that monkey thing, destroy if destroying monkeys, he destroyed he Episcopalians. Was. He will. No, well, you know, um, Ben Hur. Ben Hur. That's true. Come on now, you know, uh, you know, who, who are the choices we have? Franklin Roosevelt. Oh. Uh, Ben Hur. Ben Hur, okay. <laughs> El Cid. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, 